So today we're going to be talking about mosaic embryos, and I'm going to show you in the next few minutes that mosaic embryos make babies. Hello, my name is Dr. Christo Zuves, and I'm the medical director at Zuves Fertility Center in Foster City, California. I've been doing IVF now for more than 35 years, and IVF has been around for approximately 40 years. Now, in the first uh, 25 years of IVF, we had very little ability to actually test embryos. We had no idea which ones were normal. We used to transfer way more embryos than we should have number-wise, and we used to transfer them based on how they looked physically or based on morphology. Now, in the last 15 years, um, the ability to test embryos, especially with a platform called NGS or Next Generation Sequencing, allows us to get very accurate data on uh, the chromosomal makeup of embryos. And we can now categorize them into normal, mosaic, or abnormal. Some IVF programs in the country choose not to transfer mosaic embryos. And today we're going to explore why that is really not a good choice because mosaic embryos do make babies. So what is a mosaic embryo? A mosaic embryo has a mixture of both normal and abnormal cells in the 10 cells that are removed when we do the biopsy. And these 10 cells are removed from a 200 cell embryo. So here is a human blastocyst on day five. Um, and you can see it has a, a central cavity. It has a mass of cells up at 12 o'clock, which is the inner cell mass that makes the baby. And then the cells all the way around the periphery will go to make uh, the placenta. So when we run testing through next generation sequencing, we basically come up with two uh, polar opposites here. You have a situation where all 10 cells that were removed are normal. And on the other end of the spectrum, you have a situation where all 10 cells that are removed are abnormal. And this is how we end up with a label of an embryo that's normal on testing or abnormal. And normal has 46 chromosomes. Uh, whereas abnormal is going to be either missing a chromosome or would have an extra chromosome present. So what is a mosaic embryo? This is the third possibility. And this embryo has a mixture of both normal and abnormal cells in the biopsy sample. And this can be fully up to one in five uh, blastocysts that are, are tested. A mosaic embryo can make a normal baby for us because we know that mosaic embryos can fix themselves via self-correction. The abnormal cells are squeezed out, are um, overpowered by the normal cells, and this embryo then ends up being uh, normal. Um, the only caveat here is that when we get pregnant from uh, a mosaic embryo, we do need to do amniocentesis to be absolutely sure that the developing baby is normal. So this testing allows us to rank embryos basically from normal to the intermediate, which is mosaic, to the other extreme, which is abnormal. And clearly, if we have available, we should transfer a normal embryo first, a mosaic embryo second, and very rarely ever transfer an abnormal embryo from, uh, from the platform of NGS. So what are the characteristics of a mosaic embryo? A mosaic embryo will either be a high or low level. And what this means is that if you take out 10 cells from a 200 cell embryo, if less than 50% of those cells are abnormal, then you'd say that's a low-level mosaic. 
if equal to or greater than 50% of the cells are abnormal, then you would call that a high level mosaic. I'm also going to tell you in a minute about the various types of mosaic embryos. And of course, the third characteristic that we want to know on your uh, mosaic embryo is what is its morphology. And we use the Gardner grading system to know that. So here are the various types of mosaic embryos. You can see that you may have a segmental mosaic embryo where there's only one segment of a chromosome which is either extra or missing, and it's not the whole chromosome. An embryo can have one whole chromosome that's either missing or extra, or it could have two chromosomes extra or missing, or three or more, in which case we would call it complex, and it can be low level, or with those three categories, you could also have a high level mosaic embryo with one chromosome abnormal, two or three or more, which would then make it complex. So the Gardner grading system grades embryos with a number and two letters. The number refers to how expanded the blastocyst is. And you can see in this, proje this projection here that um, the early blastocyst just has a small cavity. And as the cavity gets bigger and bigger, the blastocyst expands, it cracks the shell, and it starts to hatch when it's a five. And when it's fully out of the shell, it then gets assigned the number six. And then the first letter uh, describes the inner cell mass, that mass of cells that makes the baby. And the second letter uh, describes the trophectoderm or that rim of cells around the outside. And the scale on this is A, B, C, where A is the best. So using these three characteristics, the level of high or low, the actual type of mosaic, whether it's segmental or whether it's one chromosome, uh, two or three or more, uh, as well as the grade, we can actually calculate the probability that your mosaic embryo will actually translate into a healthy baby for us. So this table is generated from um, a publication from the Zubes Foundation looking at 1,000 mosaic embryos transferred. And you can see that a euploid embryo across the board, uh, grade-wise, will have about a 52% chance of uh, resulting in, uh, in an ongoing pregnancy. If we look at a low-level or a high-level segmental, there's very little difference. It's 46% and 40%. If you have a low level one or two chromosome mosaic embryo, the ongoing pregnancy rates around 35%. It's 25% for a low level complex. It's 21% for a high level one or two chromosome mosaic embryo. And it's all the way down to just on 20% for a high level mosaic embryo, which is complex. So what is the take home? The take home here is that mosaic embryos definitely make babies. You want to know the level of your mosaic embryo, the type and the grade. And we can then plug that into the, uh, the table that I just showed you and work out the uh, probability that that mosaic embryo will translate into a baby for us. One caveat here, you definitely need to do amniocentesis when you are pregnant after transferring a mosaic embryo because of the very small chance that uh, the mosaicism or the abnormal line of cells persists in the baby. Do take advantage of this free fertility seminar. You can either scan the QR code or go to the hyperlink in the description below. This free fertility seminar starts with optimum health. It then adds maximum science, and we will cover all facets of the pre-implantation genetic testing, including 
mosaic embryos. So next steps, sign up for the uh, free fertility seminar. Also visit uh, our YouTube channel at Zuvest Fertility, uh, and you can see the links in the description below.